Chilling new calls for attacks on U.S. ambassadors around the world, apparently from the American-born spokesman for Al-Qaeda, Adam Gadon, in a new video just surfacing. Let's go ahead now and bring in our Brian Todd. He's working the details on this story, and I think the question is really, how meaningful is the threat? Can we take it to the bank? window, a small window to act, but we have to realize we have to speed up our reflexes because we're in police state time, we're in coup time. Soldiers are learning to use so-called non-lethal weapons designed to subdue unruly or dangerous individuals and crowds. We need to eliminate 350,000 people a day. Ted Turner said we need a 95% decline in populations. Okay, Ted, you first. These guys for the New World Order want to reduce the population of the world to a half billion. The ultimate objective is to implement an international currency in tandem with a system of global governance. The problem is that most people are not thinking large enough, nor do they understand the magnitude of the lie. They're not seeing the larger picture as their focus is diverted elsewhere. For example, they focus on various tentacles of the octopus, such as the gun confiscation initiative, the DHS armament acquisitions, and economic woes as independent and unrelated events. They are not. Meanwhile, others continue to adhere to, or even perpetuate the dual party meme of governance, holding dearly to the notion that there is a practical difference between the Republican and Democratic parties. Have we not seen sufficient evidence that they are now of one party acting in concert with each other? They cannot see the collusion and backroom deals and continue to hope that the next election will finally change the unchangeable continuity. It should be highly contested about uh, those in power because what I have to say about them is, is not a compliment. I can see that everything we were doing from 1986 in the OSGs uh, until I left in 1982, we're de we're, 1992, we're, we're designed to uh, align countries into a one world government. There's no doubt in my mind that that's what we were doing. Well, in working for the people I work for, I only see two classes. I see the, the leaders who are the elite, uh, and I say the leaders who are the elite because of the people that we work for. Uh, we work for uh, the Rothschilds, the Roosevelts, uh, the, the superpowers in, in money around the world. Uh, there was never any question of finances on anything that we did. If I needed $250,000 for a mission, I had a line, a signature line of credit. I walked into a bank in New York, I signed a signature signed my signature, pulled out $250,000 cash, walked away, and that money was replaced the following week. It was that easy for me. So in, in, in answer, I hope that I've answered that in saying, there's two groups. There's the citizens and there's the elite. And that's all there are. Uh, I think in summing up what I'd like to say uh, to all of, all of you who listen to this video, uh, and in the media, I'd like to ask one question. Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Senator, just uh, today, the, the London Telegraph reported that the Swiss Army conducted an exercise in which the scenario was that Switzerland was invaded by the French who came to, to Geneva and Lucerne searching for gold uh, hidden in the uh, in the Swiss vaults now the, you know this is in the London papers today and so people who um, are not paying attention to what's going on are, are you know they're clueless about how unstable the world system is right now two in three Americans now say the country is going the wrong direction half of them say it could require armed revolution they're extracting wealth so that the only thing that the, that the governments will have left to give them is the actual land that they own. While they're doing this, they're, they're amassing this wealth in order to uh, redirect it to 
toward uh, martial law endeavor, and not just in America, but globally. Declared martial law. Daddy, what's martial law? Too big to fail. Well, U.S. military officials warn of drastic effects of the government shutdown as hundreds of thousands of civilian employees have been forced to take unpaid leaves. Defense officials say with about half the Pentagon's 800,000 civilian employees placed on unpaid leave, the military will face trouble trying to make do with less civilian manpower under the shutdown. Police are looking for a pair of parachuters wearing black suits and helmets who landed near the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan early Monday morning, approximately 3 a.m. Uh, the parachutists landed on the sidewalk uh, at about 3 a.m. near the Golden Sachs building on Wall Street. It's not clear what they were doing, where they were coming from. Uh, police have, are about to uh, reveal video of the parachuters, um, but they're sorting through the uh, images and through the video in order to try to uh, identify them. Five, seen here in a YouTube video, was the target of a theft. The engine is based at Station 5 on South Hayes Street and is the closest to the Pentagon. Sources tell News 4 Engine 105 was briefly unattended during a medical call in Crystal City about 6.30 last Wednesday morning when two men removed items from the unlocked vehicle, a forcible entry tool known as a hydro ram and a set of metro keys. The keys allow firefighters fast access to secure areas of a metro station, including surface hatches and tunnels. Metro issued a statement to News 4 that says the theft was immediately reported by Arlington County to Metro Transit Police and that appropriate steps have been taken to ensure that system security is not compromised. For safety reasons, the keys must be easily accessible to firefighters, but some larger cities use secure box systems like this one made by the Knox Company that require a code to access them. The Arlington County Fire Department released a statement to News 4 about the theft. It reads, Measures have been taken to prevent it from happening in the future. Details cannot be released for security reasons. We are now in a state of martial law and war globally. NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, that Obama has called for and signed, stipulates that even American citizens can now be uh, targeted by the military, picked up and imprisoned indefinitely without civilian trial, thus throwing out our due process, our habeas corpus clauses. So we are now in the state of martial law. Hillary Clinton recently, it was reported, and I want to get your take on this, Bob, uh, in Beijing, China, where she over there, she was over there to broker a deal on any future borrowing that we might do from China by way of bonds, uh, treasuries, and, uh, well, there's a little caveat that was thrown in this. If the United States defaults on this, and we're talking trillions of dollars, that uh, there's a little thing that the United States government will institute called eminent domain to pay the Chinese back with real estate. Have you heard anything on this, Bob? Oh, yes. And it's possible and it's probable. The U.S. Intel chief is saying that because of the government shutdown, um, we are now vulnerable and he cannot ensure that the nation is secure. The leader of the United States intelligence community told members of Congress on Tuesday that the government shutdown that started one day earlier is impacting the national security of the U.S. And Senator Amy Klobuchar asked Clapper, you clearly see it as a risk to security? And he said, absolutely. So right now, we have different things happening here. We have key people in the Iranian government being assassinated. We have our defenses down um, for uh, a cyber attack because of the shutdown. The U.S. Intel chief um, is telling us that he cannot secure the nation. So just keep that in mind right now. There is, there is a U.S. Intel that just came out that said Al-Shabaab Al -Shabaab may be planning new attacks. The U.S. Intelligence, intelligence community is monitoring a specific stream of classified information suggesting that terror group believed to be behind the um, shopping mall attack may be planning 
new attacks. Two U.S. officials said the information does not include details of targets or dates, but it is the first detailed indication that they may have information to validate threats made by um, al-Shabaab that more attacks are planned um, right now. There are data points that worry us, an official said. Our intelligence is fo focused on how do we prevent any more attacks. And um, right now, the U.S. government remains highly concerned about possible attacks against Americans, facilities, businesses, um, and whatnot, because um, they're getting this chatter or information that's coming out, um, and they are trying to figure out what is happening. So what do we have? We have um, the shutdown. We are vulnerable to cyber attacks. The U.S. intel chief cannot secure the nation. Iran's uh, head people, um, one who handles cyber warfare and other nuclear um, people have been assassinated. And what do we see now happening? We see Monday at 3 a.m. two people dressed in black wearing protective headgear parachuted into New York. They don't know where they came from. They were all dressed in black and they landed outside the Goldman Sachs building and then they disappeared. A security camera caught this and the police are now reviewing it for clues. And the um, police chief Ray Kelly said if they came out of an aircraft, it's unknown at this time, but they were seen walking with parachutes away from the location. So, in the dead of night, we have people parachuting into New York. Now, did they come from a plane? Is this a way to bypass people coming in and going through the normal everyday process to have them parachute into New York to prepare in the dark of night for the next false flag? I don't know, there's a lot of things coming together here. Now, and we can see I mean, from all of this, that we have many things happening in the fall. And I just wanted to go f through all of this um, with everyone here because um, Dave Hodges on the Common Sense Show um, is pretty much saying the same thing I am saying. And I just want to read parts of this to everybody here. And um, what he says, and this is from his article, he has first-hand knowledge of three ex-Fed officials and their families who have relocated to safety enclaves when doing so was very disruptive to their respected families. Increasingly, it is looking like some major event is coming and persons with insider information are attempting to remove themselves from harm's way. My primary source from FEMA told me that they have that he was relocated to a pre-planned destination with like-minded people into enclaves which contain a high degree of preparation which are also designed to survive what is coming. America has awakened sufficiently to not allow a peaceful transition into an entire technocratic dictatorship. All of the sources believe that something dramatic will require to force the compliance of the masses. The coming event must be so horrific, so devastating, that most will be frightened into compliance. All place the nuclear option as the most likely scenario. A blackout will only prove to be the catalyst event. When the blackout occurs and an unprepared public begins to starve and, lie and lives in fear of their lives, from the marauding gangs going house to house in search of resources, that people will be forced to go to government relocation centers to seek food and shelter and safety from the rioting masses beginning on the third day following the blackout. Why do I believe the three ex-Intel sources who have gone into hiding? I believe them because we see evidence of the prophetic nature of their words in the preset set of defense drills scheduled from September 25th through November 
13th. Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Is anybody there?